So you probably learned about Roman numerals for the first time when you were in grade school. You know, how the Romans made their numbers with combinations of I, V, X, L, C, and M. I'm not going to lie, this isn't the most complicated concept, which is why you probably learned about it when you were young. But there's actually some stuff about Roman numerals that you didn't learn. So first, the basics. The Romans used letters instead of numbers to represent these figures. So I is 1, V is 5, X is 10, L is 50, C is 100, D is 500, and M is 1000. So Roman numerals are additive, which means to make two, we put two I's together. VI is five plus one, so six. LXXVII is 50 plus 10 plus 10 plus five plus one plus one, which is 77. Also with Roman numerals, we always place the higher value numeral first and then go down to the lowest one. So that's why L comes first, then the X, then the V, and then finally the I. You may have learned that four involves subtraction though, IV. And since the lesser numeral comes before the greater one, you subtract, so one from five equals four. In Roman times though, four was more frequently represented as just four I's, and they only used IV in situations where space was at a premium. So you'll find IV on tombstones, but IIII in literature. It was only in the Middle Ages that IV became the standard way to represent four. Sometimes you'll see IX for nine, but you'll never see IL for 49. Modern Roman numerals use the following subtractive values. IV is four, IX is nine, XL is 40, XC is 90, CD is 400, and CM is 900. That's about it. And there's a reason why the Romans didn't really use these subtractive notations. It's so much harder to add. Think of it this way. Add 79 plus 134. If we represent these using the regular notation, 79 is LXXVIIII, and 134 is CXXXIIII. Now to add, we just group like numerals and order them from the biggest to the smallest. C L X X X X X V I I I I I I I I. Now we can combine numerals to form higher ones. So five I's become a V, two V's become an X, the five X's become an L, and now we have two L's, which make a C, and our final number is C C X I I I, 213. Check my math to make sure that's right, but I'm sure it is, because Roman numerals just scream out to be added together. It's actually a lot easier to add using Roman numerals than it is using our modern numerals, because it's just grouping and converting. But what if we represented 79 as LXXIX and 134 as CXXXIV, you know, using the subtractive method for Roman numerals? Okay, so let's add. We put them together, rank them from the biggest to the smallest, and now we combine. So let's see. The five X's become an L, the two L's become a C, and we end up with CCXVII, 217. Wait a second. We should come up with 213, but because we used IX as nine and IV as four, it's so much harder to get the right answer. We'd have to replace IX with VIIII and IV with IIII, and then we're back to our original method. Now that's a great reason why the Romans didn't use IV as four and so on. It's just not practical. Multiplication though is a much more difficult concept. So here's the method that the Romans used to multiply together two Roman numerals. Let's say we're multiplying 39 and 134. We write them at the top of two columns and here I'm gonna use our standard notation as well, just for clarity's sake. The first step will be to have the number in the first column, and we're gonna keep doing that until we get to one. If we are trying to have an odd number, we just round down. So half of 39 is 19. Well, even though it's 19.5, we ignore that 0.5. Half of 19 is nine, half of nine is four, half of four is two, and half of two is one. Now we're going to double the number in the right-hand column. So 134 doubled is 268. That doubled is 536, you can check my math here. Then 1,072, then 2,144, and finally 4,288. And that's a big number, literally. 
Great. So with this table, we'll strike out any number in the right-hand column where the corresponding left-hand number is even. Okay, so 2,144 is gone because 2 is even, as is 1,072 because of the 4, and that's it. Now we'll add up everything. Sort and order from biggest to smallest, then combine. And we're left with... M M M M M C C X X V I, which is 5,226. Check out 39 times 134 and see if that's right, but I'm sure it is. You know, there's a strong mathematical proof for this. It's just that the Perlmans probably didn't know about it. What they did know, probably through trial and error, was that this method just worked.